Hello, welcome to Guides the Unknown. I'm Kristen. I'm William. And today we're here to educate you. We're here to give you something to talk about, something to think about. Oh, I was going to give doing them- it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you yeah. fell into the habit of making a list at the beginning. Don't talk about it so it stays natural <laughs> well, or whatever. I'm calling it out every time from now on. Well, it was on. messed up anyway because I was going to go into a let's give him something to talk about joke. But I already said give you something to talk about. This is all screwed up. Yeah, well, you you, you messed up. I'm going to try to fix it. I'm going to jump right into my topic. We're Do not going to waste any time. Nope, nope. Let's give him something to talk about. Burner, burner, burner. An octopus <laughs> to figure out. Guys, everybody listening or watching, look up Britney Spears covering that song on her most recent tour. It's a surprise. Like, you don't think that's going to happen, but it happens. And it's good. It's mm. good. She shows her range. It's yeah, good. Do that after you're done with the show. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say stop it and do that. You said instead of this show. <laughs> All right. My topic this week, strangely enough, is the octopus. Okay. Now, on our... Just uh, just the octopus. Kind of. There is a reason. On our Facebook yes, page... Yes, Katie. Yeah. Yeah. On the Guide to the Unknown mm-hmm. Facebook page, follow at GTTU pod all over the place to mm-hmm. see crazy stuff like this. Yep. Katie, our good friend... Yep. Viewer slash listener of the show... Slash Posted lover. an article that was, I felt, completely mind-blowing. Yeah. Um, there is a recent study... Uh, <laughs> published by 33 scientists suggesting completely seriously that octopuses, octopu- I don't know, the octopi, octopi, octopus, <laughs> might indeed be aliens. This is crazy. So I skimmed this because I saw it when I was at work. So I'm really excited that you're talking about this because I kept meaning to go back to it and never did. Oh. So you're bringing it to me. Oh, it's crazy. So All this right. is... This is an absolutely true story that is being uh, shared on reputable, you know, papers, blogs, whatever. Yeah. That the origin of the octopus, an animal that we are all familiar with, <laughs> right? Might <laughs> maybe somebody out there is going to be like, "Now, what is this? <laughs> Tell me a little bit about this octopus." Yeah. Well, part of this, I am trying to explain, like, why is it that people are so yeah, fascinated sure. by them? Because it seems like people have always been vaguely vexed by the octopus. <laughs> Um, it is a vexing creature, but apparently it might have its origins in the cosmos. So sweet. I mean, don't we all? Yeah. So, uh, this paper was written by people, including molecular immunologist, Edward Steele and astrobiologist Chandra Wickramushinj. Oh, both excellent biologist names. Edward Steele. Edward Steele. I mean, that sounds like a steamy romance novel or like the new, like what's his name? Like Dale Patterson. (laughs) What? What? J- J- Jake Grisham, John Grisham's son, <laughs> might write an Edward. Wait, Steele is there really novel. a Jake Grisham? Oh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that just sounds kind of like a knockoff. It's, yeah, well, it sounds. I mean, that would make sense because there's like Joe Hill for Stephen <laughs> yeah, King. Yeah, exactly. So it, it feels right that like John Grisham's son would, be, would see Joe Hill out there writing Nosferatu and be yep. like, "Wait a second. Yep. I think there's room in this market for both of us." Ooh, have you read the new Hank Grisham? <laughs> The newest book in the Edward Steele series comes out. He fights an octopus in space. So anyway, (laughs) the paper was published in the March issue of the journal Progress in Biophysics and Molecular Biology. Cool. I subscribe. Oh, it's crazy. Okay. So here's the basic general idea. Uh, There's a quote. A Uh lot of quotes in here. So bear with me. I I removed a lot of the heady, annoying stuff. Perfect. Uh, We're not going to learn that many, like, deep facts about Mm -hmm. the science at play here. About the deep sea. Yeah. Yeah. But the general concept. That's what I want. And I've always said it, Kristen. I say it every day. The sea is the outer space of Earth. I completely agree with you. The sea is absolutely insane. Who the hell knows what's in there? It is so crazy that we just walk around that thing. Oh, yeah. Acting like this is normal. We go into it. Yep. Yep. We wade into the 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 ocean. The sea is bonkers. We keep our shirts on at the beach and wade into the sea. You got that right. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You say that you forgot your swimsuit so that you have to go in in your full outfit. I just tell people I don't own one, which is true, but it's also a great excuse. Yes. The genetic divergence of octopus from its ancestral colioid subclass is very great. Its large brain and sophisticated nervous system, camera like eyes, which is like. Like kind lenses? Of. Well, yeah. it's 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 wacky. I'll get into it. Okay. Flexible bodies, instantaneous camouflage, uh, uh, appeared suddenly on the evolutionary scene. So, 
understanding the com- like the concept, the theory of evolution, which is not a theory in the sense that like we imagine it's true. Right. Um, it's a fact. Yeah. We all have like uh, uh, sort of common ancestors on right. this planet. We are all sort of like part of the same species in a weird way if you dig far enough back. Right. Um, the octopus and humankind diverged like <laughs> obviously a long time ago. I read that it was probably like a little worm that had like yeah. – like, that like I don't know, weird skin and maybe an eye, whatever. (laughs) So anyway, the octopus is an invertebrate. I'm going to explain a little bit about what the octopus is. I know people know what that is, but I want to... Just in case. I want to get everybody up to speed because this is a creature that we believe... Let's get everybody up to speed on the octopus and what that is. I want to get everybody up to speed on the fact that this is a creature that we all accept as normal. Okay. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. I gotcha. And that we claim that we do have a common ancestor. Yeah. So here are some facts. Okay. About the octopus. Okay. It is a cephalopod. This is the same class as like squids, Uh mollusks, Mm -hmm. a a snail. I like the word mollusk. A snail. Mm -hmm. Like an octopus is just one of those guys without a shell, basically. Right. They don't live very long, which I'm surprised by. Yeah, I guess for some... What? Why did I read that snails and octopuses are the same exact thing without difference at all? I don't think you read that. You're right. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so uh, they only live for three to five years. Yeah, I'm surprised. I would have thought that octopi live for a really long time. Like they're all old and wizened down there. I know that they live for like like 30 years. years. Yeah, well, there is crazy stuff about like how the lobster apparently is yeah. potentially an immortal creature. What? Have you not heard about this? No. The, the sea is just aliens. Yeah. They're all a bunch yeah. of giant bugs. Yeah. And they're very gross. I know. <laughs> so you know, the lobster are cool. So the lobster, evidently, without like interference from environmental factors like predators, especially humans, uh-huh. they have the potential to just live forever. They just continue to grow. That's it. They don't. They don't naturally age and die. And they continue to grow. Like theoretically, there could be like a humongous lobster somewhere. I. I mean, I'm sure that there are limits to it. Right. But I mean, like all. Even if you stay in the world of cephalopods, like yeah. squids. Think about like <laughs> Let's. the Nautilus. Uh huh. The idea of the kraken, this like gigantic squid that can take down ships and stuff. Yeah. Like, it's weird, but octopuses don't really grow to be that gigantic. Right. And they don't live that long. However, they have the largest brain of all invertebrates. Relative wow. to their that makes body. sense. So it's, you know, like, you know, relative to their general size. Yeah. They have the biggest brains. Makes sense. And they got that big cabeza. Yeah, exactly. They have the real estate. They do. But that's unusual looking at other animals of its same class. Hmm. They are able to use tools, which is an unusual characteristic. Yeah. So they might, like, uh, go out hunting. Okay. And then dart back into a cave and start taking rocks to pile in front of their cave they live in for shelter. Wow. And they'll sleep in there when they're comfortable that like they've guarded themselves. So it's like they build like a sea nest. Yes. Yeah. They will take parts of coconuts Uh and drag them around to use as bras. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) The the octopus brassiere. Yeah. Um, But they will like curl up in a coconut shell to basically use it as a shield or like a de facto shell. Um, Wow. Yeah. Over the years, octopuses have shown many more signs of intelligence. They proved to have excellent memory. They were clever and unpredictable. Jennifer Mather, a Canadian biologist, has tossed toys into octopus tanks and watched as the octopuses inspect them and puff them around with jets of water. That's amazing. They are playing with them, she argues. An unusual trait in invertebrates. Uh, Mather is also the author of a new paper arguing for the consciousness in octopuses. Uh-huh. Uh, she does not claim that they have full-blown consciousness like we do, but a simpler form known as primary consciousness. In other words, they can combine their perceptions with their memories to have a coherent feel for what's happening to them at any moment. I mean, that sounds right to me. I know, but like, I, I guess this is like a completely unusual yeah, trait yeah. in animals. I guess I didn't know this. that they people thought they didn't have consciousness at all. Well, this yeah. is also some of like the, the, I think the hubris of man Yeah. where it's like, I feel like it's like cut tusks off elephants. Cause they're cool looking. And then we're like, Oh no, they remember each other and yeah, right. they have like little societies and stuff. Right. And there's a fake video where they paint. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, why are we pretending that animals aren't more complex? Yeah. than you think like, why do we always pretend that they are simple things that uh, operate because exclusively we're on arrogant. Instincts? people yeah. and also it's more convenient that's true 
Um, they do, uh, in addition to having amazing camouflage, which literally allows them to, their skin is full of chromatophores, which they yeah. can use to basically like, um, almost a, a, the way, the way I read it is if you put dye like paint into a balloon yeah. and squeeze that balloon, how the balloon would puff out and it would give the impression that it's all that one color. Well, uh-huh. It's really just sort of like a little material inside that's giving that impression. Right. Their skin is covered in that, which is how they're able to so insanely mimic the color of things around them. Um, that is such a crazy thing to me. I know there are other animals and things that do that, but the idea of camouflaging, that is really mind bending that yeah. we just accept that that's a thing in nature. Even more mind, mind bending is the fact that the octopus is colorblind. What? The octopus cannot. So how does it? That's crazy. The, the modern thought process on that, their pupils, if you think about the way that an octopus looks, their eyes are weird looking. They look like goat eyes. In really. a way. Their pupils are like, Sometimes they're like U shaped. Oh, I guess or kind I can. Of like a yeah, bell yeah, yeah. shaped. Uh-huh. Um, evidently, that does mean they're colorblind in the way that we perceive color. But they might have the ability to distort the shape of their eye, lengthening the lens, letting in more light, and so they are able to perceive different sort of like um, um, like filters of color on things, which allows them to perceive color and mimic it. But they don't see. The way that we see. So anyway. That's insane. Also being really interesting. It sounds like they have nailed it. That's what's happening. But not even side theory, side idea. It would be cool if they had some um, extra sense something that yeah. like allowed them to feel out color in well, some they, sort of they way. Well, they kind of do. Like they're seeing different spectrums of light. Right. You well, know? no, I mean not even visually. Like if there's something that like is like going on with them. that feel color. Yeah. That yeah. like tells them like this is this and that is that. And I need to adapt to that. Right. True. Well. Uh, not only are they able Vibration. to change the shape of their eyes yeah. and stuff, they're able to completely change the texture and shape of their body. And I'm not That's- just talking about like there are uh, videos of like uh, like octopuses mimicking the movement of other sea creatures, yeah, like turning themselves to look like a like a floppy flop fish, whatever oh my the hell. God, but they can change the texture on their bodies uh-huh. by basically like puffing out different parts of their skin to give their entire body different texture, so that they can blend into sand. Like it's that's wild. Yeah, it's very very weird the things that they are able to do. They have a, yeah. So basically. All of what I am saying is they have a much more complex range of abilities mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. than most other creatures on this planet. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Which are highly unusual and couple that with their intelligence. The fact that in uh, studying octopuses, scientists have observed that they have personalities. Yeah. They're able to like memorize environments and sort of build escape routes in their head of like having like a basically keeping a map in their head of the environment that they're in, like more complex animals. Uh, That's so nuts. They're crazy. So here's the evidence of them being aliens. Okay. I'm ready for it. All right. It is plausible to suggest, this is from the paper. Yeah. Seem to borrow from a far distant, quote unquote, future in terms of terrestrial evolution, or more realistically, from the cosmos at large. That's what the paper claims. It's so sweet. Indeed, few in the scientific community would agree that octopuses come from outer space, but the paper is not just about the provenance of cephalopods. Its proposal that octopuses could be extraterrestrials is just a small part of a much more extensive discussion of a theory called panspermia, which has its roots in ideas of ancient Greece. Panspermia is the idea that there are seeds everywhere, that the universe is made up Uh of teeny tiny cells of life, seeds of life Uh that have landed on this planet, you know, hundreds of thousands of years ago, kickstarting a process of evolution that is totally divergent from other life that started here. That's an interesting theory. Isn't that crazy? That's very crazy. So there are a lot, there are, there are, are spermia. Yeah. There are a lot huh. of theories that, uh, even like humans, yeah. that like tons of different kinds of life on the planet yeah. come from elsewhere. Right. Right. That, like we might have our start originally mm-hmm. as like dust in space on meteoroids that mm-hmm. landed in the water. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and there have been tons of movies about that. Yeah. Uh, the movie Prometheus, which is one of the prequels to the movie alien. Yep. Like has a prologue mm-hmm. where they show primordial earth. Yeah. And it's beautiful and it's all just like waterfalls and, and stuff. And, Life in terms of like grass, but nothing more complex than that, really. Yeah. And then an alien drinks a cup of goo 
uh-huh. and it dissolves his body and he falls into the water and his DNA breaks up and then becomes like various kinds of life. It becomes fish yeah. and that's lizards cool. and mammals. That's and really stuff. sweet. So yeah, that's a, a real sort of like theory about where all this comes from. And now scientists are positing specifically that octopuses uh-huh. might have started Quick question. Way. Are you, when you were writing this, were you paraphrasing? Like, did they write octopuses or are you oh, saying octopuses? octopuses? Yeah, it yeah, is yeah. octopuses. Okay. Yeah, I should have said that when I was yeah. trying to figure out what the plural was and then yeah. I went to my notes. Everyone's saying octopuses. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I wonder if they're both right or if octopi is just totally wrong. Like, you know how sometimes there are things that everybody thinks is yeah. right and it's just like, actually, we don't know where that came from. Yeah, it feels like cacti, octopi. Yeah, right. right? Is cacti not right? Cacti is right. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe they're both right. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Uh, so anyway, they're basically saying that like other creatures in the universe, and this is like a big theory about this, Mm -hmm. that like, um, one of the ways that a lot of scientists would expect alien life to look, maybe if it's not intelligent enough to literally travel to us, it would probably resemble octopuses specifically. Why? I, it's, it's very weird. Here's a paper that was, uh, written in so this this whole thing i should point out this like recent paper uh uh-huh. um came out in march okay 2018 this is from a book written by michio kaku called the future of humanity terraforming mars interstellar travel immortality and our destiny beyond earth this came out That's one cool. month earlier uh-huh. than this paper it came out in february this year yeah aliens like humans this is his theories on how they would look. Because after I was learning about octopuses and stuff, I was like, I wonder what people think aliens should look like. Yeah. If octopuses are aliens, then what do scientists consider aliens like might theoretically look right. like? So anyway, this is a book that came out a month earlier. Um, and you kind of have to like sit with this for a minute. It All comes right. back. I'll I sit with it. The aliens, like humans, would have stereo vision, which allows eyes to compare images and track distance, a necessary feature in predators who hunt and track their prey. So Is that aliens, camera one, camera two? Yes. Yeah. So aliens would have camera one, camera two. Yeah. Uh, in all likelihood, intelligent aliens in space will have descended from predators that hunted for their food. This does not necessarily mean that they will be aggressive, but it does mean that their ancestors long ago might have been predators. We may be well served to be cautious. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this is the theory. For some reason, just that sentence really got me. I know. Oh, yeah. We may be well served to be cautious. I can't envision a future where we wouldn't be cautious if we made contact with aliens, but totally. But that seems like a very um like measured scientist or politician way to say, like, oh my god, this could yeah. be some real stuff. Yeah, 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 I guess. The aliens would have some form of opposable thumbs or grasping appendages oh boy. necessary for hunting prey and creating tools, which they would have to do to be sophisticated enough to make contact. Uh-huh, so right. presuming that they've made contact with us. Yeah. They would also need to have language in order to hand down and accumulate essential information from generation to generation. Some form of language is crucial. Uh, he theorized, this is where it starts to get a little wacky. Uh-huh. He theorized that many alien civilizations will exist on ice-covered moons. Okay. Like Jupiter's moon Europa or Saturn's moon and. En- Enceladus. Okay. Where Encelada? Li- Encelada. Where life would exist Wait, completely... Wait, why'd you... Like a delicious salad? Yeah. Okay. Where life would exist completely underwater. Um, and this is what brought him back to Earth. Okay. The one Earth-bound underwater animal that nearly fits all the above criteria, stereo vision, graspable appendages, is the octopus, he writes. Okay. It was okay. a month before 33 scientists published a paper about how octopuses might be able So maybe we shouldn't be laughing at these gu- this guy's ice-covered moon theories. Sure, yeah, and I mean, like, because... I read, like, if you Google this, there are, yeah. like, numerous other sources that, like, this 33 scientist report from yeah. March isn't the first time that this theory has been posited. Uh-huh. It's notable that this new paper has been published, but, like, right. this has been a common thing. Like, if you look right. if you look up, are octopuses aliens? Yeah. People have a lot to say. Huh. <laughs> has Tom DeLong chimed in? I wondered about that. We talked Probably. about that on a previous episode that yeah. Tom DeLong from Blink-182 started his own yeah. alien research company. Yeah, I can't remember what it's called. We have to check. It's like a I bet sweet they, name. I bet they retweeted it. <laughs> oh, they remember definitely. we looked at that account was mostly retweeting other things people had done. <laughs> Whatever. Maybe they'll be the first to make Because content. they're busy researching. Yeah. Uh, 
On a different planet, however, cephalopods could easily develop language. In fact, if conditions changed drastically on Earth, Kaku says it could even happen here too. On a distant planet under different conditions, one can imagine an octopus-like creature could develop a language of chirps and whistles so it could hunt in packs. One could even imagine that at some point in the distant future, evolutionary pressures on Earth could force the octopus to develop intelligence. So an intelligent race of octopods is certainly a posi- possibility. So we're going to be worrying about octopuses in the water and like we worry about sharks? I mean, I don't know if we need to worry about them because they would definitely beat us. <laughs> they like, they, you know, they like crack open muscles and like yeah. rip their bodies No, that's what open. I'm saying. Yeah. What do you mean we, we shouldn't worry about them because they would definitely beat us? Why worry? They're just going to come and clamp on your face and kill you anyway. Which reminds I'm me, talking like, about the middle ground, like not them like leaving the seas. I'm talking about when you go oh, like, to swim oh. the same way that you have to watch out for sharks and yeah. stuff. Like, do we have to watch out for octopuses coming for us? Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's what God. I'm saying. You, Kristen. If that starts happening and they start chirping and whistling at each other, oh god. Not that I go in the ocean anyway, but let's let's say <laughs> my What's that? And then you get attacked by an octopus. My huggies are going to be perpetually fudged. Yeah. I will never go to the beach again. Oh, I'd have some I'd have some fruit in those looms. Oh my god. That's for sure. So, um that also <laughs> reminded me. So, Here's a weird thing. In in like reading about this stuff, I tried to pare it down to just sort of like Why the bare is that essentials. scarier than a shark? Maybe just An in octopus? the moment cuz yeah, cuz I'm having the novelty eight, of it. Eight yeah, I guess I'm picturing the grabbing tent- onto you. That's the thing. I, yeah. I guess with a shark it's st- well, it's all horrifying. It's yeah. all horrifying. The thing is that octopuses Thinking about this is new to me, which is why it's <laughs> right. More octopuses scary. from what I've read, like they they typically like try to like they they feed mostly on like mollusks uh-huh. so they will run away from larger creatures yeah like they'll they'll back away from people uh-huh unless like they, ha- they have developed some sort of, like, provoked comfort or familiarity with them whatever yeah but like um in doing some of this research i read that aristotle <laughs> said he was like perhaps there is no creature dumber than the octopus let's not tempt <laughs> and it was like well it's not tempt fate, Aristotle. We're wrong. Maybe that's why he's not with us anymore. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. You Do take... we know how Aristotle died? Mm, octopus hmm. attack. That's what I'm saying. I bet an octopus attacked him, and then they framed a natural cause yeah. or something. Assassinated by an yeah. octopus. Yeah. Um, but like, I thought that was kind of funny that like one of the the people that we consider to be like the most brilliant and clever, <laughs> right, is very wrong. Is calling out one of the yeah. smartest creatures on the planet as being a dumb, dumb idiot. <laughs> That is really funny. Yeah. But it's just like, bad luck. Yeah, for sure. But it also like, it made me think about other things that I've seen in movies and stuff about aliens having tentacles and yeah. culture. Like the Simpsons, they have Kang and Kodos, those like two giant, they talk like this uh-huh, and they go uh-huh. down to the planet and they're just like all tentacle monsters and yeah. tentacles are a giant thing. Oh, totally. Tentacles are huge with aliens. Yeah. Alien imagery is yeah. all tentacles. Yeah. And it's just, it's crazy that to think weird. that like. Not only is it because those animals, octopuses and squids and stuff, are really freaky because they're kind of unusual based on other things that we've seen on this planet, but right. it's like, oh, you turned out to be right about that. That maybe yeah. octopuses came down to this planet because they rode in on meteors. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and I mean, the other thing weird. that's that's weird, and this is like where it gets like straight up stupid, uh-huh. I think, to me, is that like I always thought of the idea of aliens as being like, it could be anything Mm -hmm. like i don't even know like this all right no one talk to me about this unless you agree with me and i know that that's not like the right thing to say like to be like (laughs) it's valid don't change my mind it's like i because i know i know that there's a more intelligent answer and i can tell you theoretically what it is which is like like you can you can obviously um uh uh, develop theories and then do tests to see if it's likely Mm -hmm. that that theory might be true using like like the scientific method and studying probability. But to me, I was always like, everyone's looking for signs of water on Mars and yeah. stuff to see if there was ever life there before. Yeah. Nothing I, ever happens on <laughs> Mars. I always wondered, I'm like, what if there's just an, a different su- substance that we've never heard of before? Yeah. You know, it's not carbon, it's not water, and it's what a different life form is completely based on. I think that's possible, you right? I, but it sounds like no. It sounds like the answer is no. But maybe they just don't know. I know, but we're able to observe planets that are like completely composed of ice or have conditions I similar know. to Earth with running water. I know, but still, we discover new things all the time. I know. Like, relatively, throughout throughout time. Like, things that we would never have thought were possible, yeah. we discover them all the time. So, yeah. I absolutely think that that's feasible. Yeah, I just want there to be 
a life form out there yeah. that is completely 100% unrecognizable. Yeah. And we'd look under it, at it under a microscope and be like, what, it, what the hell is this? <laughs> like, I don't even know what this building block is. I've right. never seen it before. Right. And they're like, we are Cardablom. <laughs> you have to like, like, well, I've never heard of that before. So I don't know. Like, it's not a type, like their ships aren't made of metal. They're made of something we've never seen before or heard of before. Well, like, that was a thing not? from um, our episode about Tom DeLonge and whatever that Space Academy is called or whatever. Like, wasn't there something about how um, some, like, uh, you guys might want to go back because I don't remember this totally. But there was some guy who said that he worked in a building in Vegas or something where they housed material that we don't right. even know anything about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yet, you're basically, right. there yeah. is something with that going on. Yeah. See, that's so Ugh. much. It's so crazy. It's, it's so interesting. It's crazy. It's fun because yeah. then you can just like, imagine whatever. Because yeah. even like Star Wars. Like mm-hmm. their ships appear to be made out of metal and like there's a wolf man in the first one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's like why are there wolves? Why does Chewbacca really? look like a doggy? Yeah. There's a wolf? Yeah. Oh, well, they cut it out of like the like when he remastered stuff. Really? Oh yeah. When they you can find it. When they originally go to the bar on Tatooine, uh-huh. They're like and Luke is being like, What are all these great which is weird because he lives there. I guess it's more the camera just yeah. sort of showing you stuff. Yeah. Um there's like straight up a werewolf mask. <laughs> what? Yeah, for sure. And like, that's so weird. I think in in later editions of the movie, oh my God, they they cut him out and replaced him with like a goopy, you know, <laughs> string bean faced monster. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but like, yeah, like <coughs> the world of Star Wars still has sort of recognizable features and stuff. And right, you know, everything I've read about. Well, yeah, they're humans. The rest of the universe and other universes and stuff yeah. is like, yep, it's all, you know, you've got a star and that's mm-hmm. at the center of your uh, your galaxy there. And you got planets <laughs> that have, you know, atmospheres that are similar to ours and sure, air and sure. stuff. And I'm like, I don't even want to know about air. Yeah. Like, I want there to be like some crazy other thing that like breathes solid matter. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I want crazy stuff to happen. That could happen. The, the universe is like infinite. They're, we're only in one galaxy. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it is It really crazy. M- messes with my mind when I think about it. Does it scare you at all? Do you ever, do you ever? Yeah, uh, scare isn't the right, it overwhelms me. Yeah. When I think about that stuff, when I think about the fact that we're only one galaxy. Right. Like our planet is a planet within a galaxy and there are a ton of others and there are wormholes and all this crazy crap that, makes me like i can't even comprehend yeah. how is this possible i don't i can't imagine I know. it's yeah. awesome yeah so, it's amazing so again i understand why that all may not be like true uh-huh but like but, I, don't, I don't need to hear about like how they discover other planets or whatever the hell or how they know that water is the, the right. building block of life right this Just other thing take what we're talking about for what it is yeah we don't need a corrections corner yeah and i will stubbornly just go like well you don't know <laughs> because nobody does for yeah, real. I don't know. Maybe like a Blornax eat blobber. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. We know what we know, yeah. but I think it's arrogant to think that there's, there's not other stuff going yeah. on. Hey, come up with an alien name that no one's ever heard before. Herxac. Perfect. That was a great name. <laughs> Thank that you. was wonderful. Well done. <laughs> Thank um, you. I'll finish by just saying this because that's basically it. Like, yeah. That's the theory that like they, you know, there's not necessarily a planet of octopuses right. running around that are like, we come from another world. <laughs> yeah. But like the fact that there is, uh, uh, you can look at the common ancestors between like squids and octopuses and then go like, well, hold on. Like, yes, they may have evolved a lot of these traits about being able to mimic their environment and change the texture of their skin and their eyes are able to change shape to see different spectrums. Yeah. But like what they're, all they're really saying is it seems like there was a gigantic evolutionary leap mm-hmm. and that question mark might lead you to theorize that there, because you don't see those building blocks, because you don't see that chart of evolution going like uh, uh, through Neanderthal up to yeah. all the way to modern man. If there's a giant question mark there, then hey, then man, put a squid there. Yeah, like maybe there was like some external factor, and there's already this theory that there is biological matter that could have crashed on the planet. Bam, right. That's that's a theory. Right. But even that's disappointing that it's like it is a cephalopod and so are squids. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So it's like if it did come from another planet, it did have the same building blocks. Yeah. But whatever. Yeah. So anyway. That's crazy. I wanted to pick something that was sort of like cosmic anyway. And yeah. then I was like, well, this is like the craziest news that a a you know, a normal animal on the planet, something that we're all familiar with right. might be extraterrestrial. Um 
I don't typically think about aliens much. Uh huh. That that's not the most fascinating kind of like unknown monster yeah. to me, but I think it is like crazy to ignore it. And the only thing that I ever encountered that I thought was cool was uh, encounters the loosest term. For uh-huh. this. Uh, when I was like 13, 12 or 13, we were floating around in the pool, my uh-huh. friend and I, uh-huh. and it, I was just like, kind of like, we weren't talking. It was like one of those, like, it's like a quiet summer night. Sure. And it was just kind of like peaceful, whatever. And I was floating around and I was looking up at the stars and I went, Hey, I didn't even, I, you know, I was just talking to talk cause that's what, how I frequently operate. And I went, Hey, do you think, do you think it's possible that there are aliens somewhere out there? Anywhere. They might be somewhere. Do you think it's possible? It was quiet for a minute. My friend went, he didn't say anything. And I went, what do you think? Like, what? What? And he goes, um, can we go inside? I went, what? Why? What? And he goes, I'm just really scared. <laughs> I scared him by <laughs> even asking. Hey, do you think it's possible I there might be that. aliens? Um, I have to go home. <laughs> Mind I remember that as you guys sitting on the roof. I, I I blew this up in my mind a little uh, bit. I thought you were sitting on the roof at nighttime. No. So you had to get out of the pool and towel off and yeah. everything. And the entire time I was like, oh, weird. It's fine. It's fine. Whatever. Like maybe it's that's so the, good. Maybe he's in particular afraid of, you know, aliens, whatever. But it's like, apparently I floated the barest concept. <laughs> like I almost asked like a hypothetical question because it was just too quiet. Like, <laughs> all right. Something <laughs> not scared now. Not really like that happening, but some somewhat similar doesn't have anything to do with aliens or anything cool. But when I was still doing hair in a salon, um, a client was talking to me about the, a trip that they had coming up. And, um, I was like, Oh, do you, do you like, fl- like, do you mind flying? Is it easy for you or whatever? And she was like, uh, yeah, it's fine. You know, I don't love it, but like, I'm fine with it. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I really don't like it. I'll do it. But like, I just, I feel really claustrophobic yeah. when I'm flying. I don't like, there's nowhere I can go. And she was like, well, now that's all I'm going to be able to think about. Like re- not joking, totally switched. And I was like, Oh, she wouldn't have thought of that on her own. Okay. And also it, it affected her so much in that moment. Yeah. And it was very weird. Like she was like mad at me and I was like, okay. Okay. And then the next time she came in, she was like, so I couldn't stop thinking about that when I was flying and like, she was like pissed. And I was like, I, I don't remember what I said. It was a long time ago, but I was like, look, I said like a pretty innocuous sentence. It seems like you took it and ran with it. Like, I'm yeah. sorry you felt that way, but that's not on me. Yeah. No. That's- and she was just kind of like. <laughs> yeah, but I guess even that is like it's kind of a practical thing that maybe she was trying to put it out of her head. I don't know. I had she something. was so casual. She was like, "Yeah, you know, it's not my favorite, but I can do it." And then she was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I'm going to tell you something crazy right now. Okay, I encountered a sort of phenomenon, uh-huh. like a year ago, maybe two years ago, uh-huh. that afflicted me for probably like a couple months. Okay, and it made every social interaction I had with anybody incredibly painful. Okay. And I'm afraid of telling anybody what it is that I thought of. Great. So tell everybody. I know. And I'm like, I feel like I could infect a bunch of people by saying it on the show. And you would, w- this You're freaking thing, me out. This thing would have you in, e- like every time you talk to somebody being like, what am I supposed to do? What am I, what am I supposed to do? Um, it's, it's not this. I'll give you like a very like bland idea of it. It was like, you know, 30 Rock when Jack Donaghy's trying to film a commercial. And he's like, what am I supposed to do with my arms? Yeah. It was something like that. I thought of something that like would make a social interaction uncomfortable and then I couldn't remember how to do it naturally. And every time I would talk to somebody, I'd I'd almost be having like an anxiety attack being like how how do I act to seem normal cuz I can't stop thinking about this thing. Oh my god. It was very weird. I don't want to know. Yeah. Oh. I I'm going to try to take this to my grave. I don't know how successful I will be. Okay. Because I feel like it's a life hack to make you very uncomfortable. Yeah, no, that's the opposite <laughs> of a life hack. Then. Yeah, it's a life ruining. Yeah, it's trick. a life destroyer. Cheat code. Make yourself uncomfortable every time you're near another human. Ugh. You'll forget how to use your body. <laughs> like it's very weird. It happened to me though. It was I don't incredibly want it. frustrating. I don't want it. I don't... And then one day I just kind of clicked back into place. I don't need I have enough afflictions up there. I don't need to add anything to that ensalada. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um. Anyway, that is the octopus. Cool. The weirdest normal am- animal. Yeah. <laughs> this whole topic is. Let me tell you about a completely normal thing. Yeah. <laughs> not. Not really, though. Yeah, it might come from outer that space. That was crazy. Yeah, from the stars. Yeah. 
<laughs> from the stars. <laughs> All right, sweet. So I'm going to take us back down to Earth to a little place called Hollywood. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Okay, Will, do you know anything about the relationship? I don't even know if you know who this person is. Between Jane Mansfield and Anton LaVey? Jane Mansfield? Yeah. Was she? Did she? Have she was a hot, topsy actress. No. Hmm. Who was she? A hotsy totsy actress. Okay. From um, <laughs> ma- like her heyday was like the fifties and sixties. All right. Um, she was like a a bombshell type lady. Like I obviously know the name, and I feel like the second that I know a movie or something, I'll be like, oh, of course. Well, I don't really know. She wasn't really in like big movies. She was kind of in like B movies. She was basically 20th Century Fox's answer to Marilyn Monroe because basically when Marilyn Monroe became huge, every studio wanted to have their Marilyn Monroe. Gotcha. Yeah. So, um, oh yeah, I think I know her because she was Hotsy Totsy. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's what people know about. Some her. of her notable movies include Promises, Promises, where she was the first lead actress in like a major motion picture to be naked in a movie. Oh really? Yep. In 1963. Yep. Uh, the girl can't help it. Will success spoil Rock Hunter, everybody's favorite? That's weird. Yeah. And the loves of Hercules. Yeah. So she was kind of, she definitely dined out on her sexuality. She had big bazooms. She had platinum blonde dyed hair. Yeah. And she definitely tried to strike kind of a Marilyn esque figure. Yeah. Um, literally and figuratively. Um, so, like, there's a really famous picture of her where she's at a dinner for maybe an award ceremony or something, and she's sitting next to Sophia Loren, and her boobs are, like, she has, like, one nipple out, basically. Oh. Like, not not entirely, but it's partially out. Yeah. And Sophia Loren is sitting next to her, and she's looking down, like, side-eyeing her boobs. Oh, like staring daggers. Kind of. Yeah. Um, because she was known for setting up wardrobe mal- wardrobe malfunctions. Oh, really? Like she would intentionally wear a dress with no bra that's really low cut wow. to get that to happen. She'd split a seam. She. Um, <laughs> that's typically very embarrassing when it happens to the rest of us. Right. <laughs> for the record, I don't want no. To Jane Mansfield's courting it. I frequently go out in public and try to <laughs> stage events where I'll split my pants <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just for the publicity. Let me bend over to pick up this tootsie roll, yeah. and I'll be right with you. Um, so she was an actress and she was, she was very famous because of her publicity hounding. Like she had a publicist and everything. And in 1960, she topped the press polls for having more words about her in print than anybody else worldwide. So she was Kim Kardashian. Politicians, everybody. I hate it. I hate it when old people go like, this was the (laughs) cell phone of the 1920s. (laughs) writing mail. I know. And I, like, you got to remember this was before iPhones existed. But that sounds like Kim Kardashian, like almost directly to just be like, I'm going to stay in the, or the Kardashian family in general, no matter what, uh-huh. no press is bad press. I'm going to have people talking about me. Yeah. The Kardashian family. I would say that Kim Kardashian, from what I read, has a little bit more respect than Jane, Jane Mansfield. Oh, she people, got, Cause we all kind of knew that she was doing this stuff just for attention. So like, she was more the Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> I like, tell you, I take my bazooms out in public. I get no respect. Like, I don't think anybody was like, oh, no, poor Jane, Mans- Jane Mansfield. She split a scene. Like, everybody's right, like, yeah, oh, my yeah. God, she's doing it again. Yeah. Kind of thing. Um, sh- so she also had a lot of press because her personal life was very crazy. Um, she was married and divorced three times. And if you looked at the years of her marriages, it's like, I'm making this up. Let's say this marriage ended in 1958. The next marriage starts in 1958, goes to 63. Ah, yeah. The next marriage starts in 63, ends at whatever. Cool. So she just like like stacked them up. Um, and I'm, she... <laughs> what? I'm very sorry. I'm going to try to stop just interrupting you. Okay. <laughs> but I, it just hit me that this episode is going to be called The Octopus and Jane Mansfield. <laughs> This is going to be awesome. Well, I feel like we have to include Anton LaVey because he's very important to this. I'm going to get there. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. We'll figure it out, but that is a really sweet name. Yeah. Sounds um, like a movie. Yeah. <laughs> the Octopus and Jane Mansfield. Oh, knowing that she was known for like kind of sexploitation movies, that movie could get real gross. Oh. I don't want to see the Octopus and Jane Mansfield at mm. all. Um, so yeah, so she, you know, had this kind of crazy personal life. So she had three husbands. I believe she had kids with each of the husbands. Um, and her daughter is Mariska Hargitay, who's on Law and Order SVU. Sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. She rules. Um, and Mariska was with her when she died. Um, she died in a really tragic freak accident where she and her boyfriend 
were driving the car with three of her kids in the back, one of them being Mariska. And um, something happened where there was an accident and I think it's a truck they hit or something, but the top of their car was taken off. Oh. The legend, which is not true, was that she was decapitated, but she wasn't. But she was basically like scalped. Oh, so God. like part of the reason people say that she was decapitated, number one, it's, you know, like a gross story right. that's sensationalistic. Sure. But also, I guess there's a picture of the accident where you can see some hair, but it's her wig. Oh. So her wig came off that she was wearing, but like it seems to have some human matter on it. Oh, that's it's terrible. Horrible. Yeah, terrible. So um, she lives this kind of like crazy life and then had this really tragic ending and some people say that maybe it was connected to the fact that she had this friendship slash relationship with Anton LaVey, who is the founder of the Church of Satan. Mm. So there are really famous pictures of them together. Yeah. And that's basically all I knew about it. I've seen pictures of Jane Mansfield and Anton LaVey with her like holding a skull and him wearing a cape with like horns. Awesome. And it's like very 60s and she's like a beautiful lady and then this like weirdo is with her. It's great. And here's Batman. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, okay. So there are these famous pictures of her hanging out with Anton LaVey. Some of them are staged. Well, they're pretty much all staged. Yeah. But some of them are in her home, I believe. And some of them are like out walking on the street and everything. And people were like, what is the deal with this. This is so strange. Yeah. And then the legend is that she became a Satanist, that he indoctrinated her into the church of Satan. But it seems not to be true. So who is Anton LaVey? <laughs> That's annoying. <laughs> um, so like I said, he founded the church of Satan, um, which I, I think we've talked about the church of Satan or Satanism on here a little bit. Yeah. But Satanism is not really about Satan or anything satanic. It's basically about... Um, like pleasure and hedonism and indulgence basically. Yeah. Well, it's kind of in the middle. Like you don't want to be like totally untethered, but you also don't want to be super restricted. It's just basically like, you know, like carefully... taking care of yourself yes. is the, the thing to do yes. in the church of Satan. And in the like, church of Satan, you're, you are numero uno. Yes. And I've heard that like the biggest holiday in the church of Satan is your, your own birthday. birthday. Yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, so the reason they went with, or he went with like Satanism and that kind of imagery was that it was supposed to, um, kind of be a middle finger to Christianity yeah, and yeah. that rigid system, but also a little bit of a middle, middle finger to hippies who he saw as on the opposite end of this end of the spectrum. And they're a little bit too loosey goosey. You don't yeah, want to just yeah. be getting stoned and falling asleep on a lawn. You want to be like conscious for all this weird sex you're having. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Well, like they still do that today. Like the church mm -hmm. of Satan challenges, like famously like a few years back the church of satan um <laughs> like sued the state of ohio or something oh, getting, yeah. i know i'm getting this wrong because they had erected a church a, a statue of jesus in front of the courthouse and they were right. like all right well then guess what we want a statue of baphomet right next to him right and the point wasn't to give you know demonic imagery space for everybody to like show it off the yeah. point was it's messing with the squares yeah the point was this the the like Politics is supposed to be removed from the religion. Right. So get the other thing out of there. That was the idea. Right. Like, it's kind of a joke in a weird way. Now, like, we've read stuff from the Church of Satan website before where they do, right, where they're, like, quite a delicious mystery. That yeah, no, one. they do They do lean in to the imagery and the costumery and everything yeah. like that. But it's not, like, the core of their beliefs. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. not, like, El Diablo is real. Right. Like, they don't believe in the devil. No. At yeah. No. Um, so the way that that even started was that he was kind of a local celebrity in San Francisco through his paranormal research and playing the organ at a local cocktail lounge because huh. he was really handy on the Wurlitzer, I read. So yeah, um, even that is like kind of a... It's very Satan-y. Like, yeah, dun, dun, dun. Unless you're at like a hockey game. I feel like the, the organ doesn't necessarily have a place. <laughs> it's true. So he started having Friday night lectures on the occult and somebody who was going to them said like, hey, through your talks and everything, you really have the basis for a new religion. And he was like, well, that sounds good. So then on um, Wurlichnacht, which is a holiday that I can't remember what it's about off the top of my head and I didn't write it down. Um, <laughs> in I guess 1966, I'll try to find it, but I don't know how. And don't, it's not even important. Don't worry about it. It's important to somebody, but not for the story. Okay. Um, so it was in 1966, and um, he decided to formally announce that the Church of Satan was a thing. Um, so he ritualistically shaved his head in the tradition of ancient executioners Ooh. and proclaimed, the year is one. Oh, 
And so this was around Rosemary's Baby Time, Time Magazine with the cover that says, Is sure. God Dead? Satanic like, this Panic. Was, yeah. Yeah. This was, it was all happening. And actually the Satanic Panic of the 80s is, is kind of what caused like the large downfall of the Church of Satan. It's definitely not as hot as it once was. And that's not a hell joke. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so not unlike Jane, Jane Mansfield and Tom LaVey, he loved his publicity. So um, he wrote a lot of essays, books, he had albums come out and everything. And so within those works, these things are things that he said were true and that seem not to be true. Sure. Um, he said that he worked as a photographer for the San Francisco police and that he was a psychic investigator for them on um, 800 cases. Um, there are no records of this either way, not him being a huh. photographer or being a psychic investigator. Um, he says that he left high school and dropped out to run away and join the circus as a cage boy with the big cats and like taming them and everything. Okay. And later um, transferred to working as a musician in the, in the, the circus on the Calliope. And I wrote Calliope because there's also no record of that. Awesome. Um, and he also says that when he was on the music scene in LA that he had an affair with the then unknown Marilyn Monroe, but he called it out as saying he, as he played music at the Mayan theater where she danced and she never danced there. Wow. And I believe there's no record of him working there. See, and so this even is like, this is from a time when I feel like, <laughs> yeah, you could, you could lie about stuff and people could still figure it out, but they couldn't figure it out as easily as they can now. Right. I, I wish we could bring back that sort of braggart yeah. energy of just being like, why, yes, I did grow up a pauper, and then... Uh, well, people still do that. They just get called on it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, but it's so fun. Think about Trump Trump. Like, oh he says things God. that are, like, insane all the time, and yeah, people... But, but it, he just banks on some people not hearing the people who de debunk it. I know, I know, but I want, I want something that, like, Anton LaVey is yeah. like, that's a pretty harmless thing to just be like... <laughs> I play the organ at the Miranda as yeah. Marilyn Monroe danced, whatever the hell he said. Yeah, but he says he like, hooked up with her. Yeah, yeah, that's so not that's cool, not, I guess. Yeah. But, like, I feel like it is cool to be like, and then I joined the circus and ran away from my home and didn't finish high school and joined the circus and I worked with a big old kitty cat. Right. Like, that's awesome. I, I want to just be like, yeah, yeah, no, no. Like, I toured the, <laughs> I would tour the country. I was the world's smallest man for a while. And then, <laughs> I don't know. You know, like, I wish that, like, just lie about insane stuff that everybody just agrees obviously isn't true, but everyone just goes like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> That's great. I know. People do that for sure, but I like it in the fun way that you're talking about it. But people bank on people just not fact-checking, like, all the time. I know. It's not fun if you're trying to get away with something. It's right. fun if, if you're trying to build up this or persona if, of yourself. Or if what you're trying to get away with is, like, not a big deal. Yeah. It's just like, okay. Yeah. Okay. So these, that's what these two people are all about basically. So then the joining of the two people, William. Okay. This happens in 1966. Mm. Now there are two accounts of what might have happened. The first account is that after a party that Jane Mansfield was by, Oh, by the way, he lived in a house. It was a, a Victorian house that he had painted totally black, Sweet. which is amazing. And I think they called it the black house. If I remember correctly, I black. forgot to write it down. Yeah. Um, was that after a party, she showed up at the black house cause she had heard of him or whatever. And, um, said that she wanted to be seen by him and then they talked and whatever. Um, the other one is that it was just straight up a photo op arranged by their publicists. We don't know. Cause again, yeah. you're right. It's in that time where like it, the records aren't like necessarily really well, there. Plus if she just walked up to him and said like, if they just talked, there's yeah. no record of a conversation. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, but why I ask? Okay. So, um, Apparently, Jane was kind of interested in spirituality and the occult and stuff like that. So a story is, is that she was interested in those kinds of things. So she sought him out and he was like the thing at the moment. Um, but she told reporters. So that's kind of the legend thing, because that leads people to believe that then she was into Satanism, which sure. is all very exciting. Then. Yeah, yeah. But the truth is that she told reporters that she was Catholic and she didn't believe in the church or anything. But um, she thought he was a genius and an interesting person. Hmm. Um, right. another theory as to why they were around each other for a while was again, straight up publicity. Like, why not? Like she was kind of into like whatever is going to get her attention. He obviously would be fine with that too. They may have like, you know, had a camaraderie or something, but, but been like, 
let's go walk down the street and it's yeah, gonna like weird we can have like this, Jane like, Mansfield yep. with Anton LaVey it's gonna weird people out symbiotic relationship exactly yeah. um or uh, it, like something that's like a little bit of a combination of all of them um she was drawn to scandal scandal and danger he was drawn to beautiful women so kaboomy right and the spotlight yes right yes um but he definitely he was a sexual being as was she he was sexually so, active yeah. <laughs> he was sexually active yeah wow, wow. um so when his doctor asked him that question he said yes <laughs> right right yeah but he lied when uh, the doctor asked about the protection because he didn't want to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we use condoms every time. Uh, uh. Um, so did they have a relationship, like a, a romantic sexual relationship? We don't know. Some people who um, either knew one or both of them or kind of have studied this a lot think that it's likely because it's just kind of that thing of like, you're a hot person, I'm a hot person, and there's a spark there. So then for Was some- he hot? No, no. Yeah, hot, he, you know, I should Was shouldn't... he a good-looking guy? Uh, no, he's goofy-looking. Not hot. I guess, like... He's goofy. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at him. Like, would you say it's not a goofy-looking person? Well, For everybody at home, just Google Jane Mansell with Anton LaVey. To be fair, the picture I'm looking at, he's dressed like a Well, a that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not talking about just his straight-up physical appearance. He's like a fine-looking guy. But he is always in a costume. Yes. So it's hard for me to say like, oh yeah, that's a real hottie with a body, you know? Yeah. He, I mean, he, he's he, like a fine looking person without all the, <laughs> sure. All the capes. He seems like he's going through a lot of effort to seem different and, you know, otherworldly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so nobody really knows, but it's kind of like, well, they were both hot. They're in each other's orbit for some, you know, sometimes there's a spark between hot people. It's like, how could we not? Right. So it could be, or it could just be professional slash friendly relationship, friendly relationship. Let's freak everybody out. Right. Um, so here is where kind of the legend stuff comes in in a sinister way. Um, I didn't find anything that would support why he would do this. So I think, again, it's just taking things that happened after the fact and making a story that fits them in a creepy way. So it said that she, that he baptized her in the church of Satan and that her boyfriend, Sam Brody was there. And he was also her attorney and manager at the time. And it's said that when that happened, he cursed Sam Brody. Oh. Don't know why. And Sam Brody got into multiple car accidents before they even got into that fatal accident um, where both of them died, yeah. where Mariska was in the backseat. Um, so it's like, well, did Anton curse him and that made this happen? But also, um, it's kind of rumored that just being in his presence and getting involved in the Church of Satan at all might have brought tragedy into her life, like as far as her dying, obviously, but also her son, Zoltan, Whoa. was mauled by a lion. What? Yeah. What? How old? I think he lived. I meant to write that down and He's I forgot. Like I'm going to be completely or honest. Roy yeah. Or whatever. And also. You could either say, well, you know, Anton had dominion over the big cat kingdom, having worked with them in the circus. So that could support it. Yeah, you're right. Or, um, yeah, no, he was okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. He, um, he, what is this from? This is from 1966. So it was, was six. Oh, boy. The six-year-old yeah. son of actress Jane Mansfield and muscle man Mickey Haggerty uh, was in satisfactory condition today after going an, undergoing a second major operation in two days. Young, Guys. Wait, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I'll put it in the video version. Yep. Uh, young Zoltan Hargate was severely mauled by a t- quote-unquote tame lion last Saturday at the Jungle Land Zoo. Uh, yeah. He underwent six hours of emergency surgery that night to decompress a skull fracture and repair a slash left cheek and numerous puncture wounds. Oof. Yeah, it's terrible. Ugh. But also, guys, if you give this a Google... Look for if you put into Google Jane's son improves after lion mauling, this will bring you to this particular old newspaper clipping. And they used an interesting picture to accompany it because the picture they have next to it is a monkey (laughs) hugging a woman from, and you're seeing the back of the woman's head, you're seeing the front of the monkey's face. And the headline headline next to that says Jane's son improves after lion mauling, which makes you think that that's Jane's son and that is the improvement of him that he turned into a monkey. call him my son but really he likes oranges <laughs> and banana it's um, really good that's awesome yes yeah. sultan this is my son he's improving uh, <laughs> so that's the thing she it was only a year that she knew him before she was killed and her son was mauled by a lion then she and her boyfriend died in the car in a really gruesome way yeah 
Um, so that's kind of where the legend got kicked up. These pictures existed of her with the head of the Church of Satan, and then this tragedy comes. Yeah. So people are going to naturally knit the two together. But it seems like probably no. I think it's just kind of like weird, cool Americana folklore sure. that has obviously a sad edge to it. And um, at the end of the day, here is my conclusion that I wrote at the end of my report. I'm going to read it by, bit by bit. At the end of the day, prob a publicity stunt that came about one way or another, and they were drawn to each other because they both had these big kind of self-aware personalities tied to their sexuality and self-expression. Wow. Well. Yeah. That's Chrissy's verdict. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's probably right. Like, mm -hmm. it's beneficial to each other to stay yep. in the spotlight by appearing to have this unusual mm -hmm. kinship that nobody can make heads or tails of. They probably got a kick out of each other, so yep. it wasn't torture to hang out together and stuff. Yeah. So that's what I think. But the the optics of it, as they say, are so sweet. Oh, for sure. So for sure, I mean, even besides the monkey child. For sure, Google Jane Mansfield, Anton LaVey. Yeah, it is unusual. If there were pictures of... Uh, like who's a major celebrity now? Um, Naomi Watts. <laughs> I don't know. We're recording this in the year 20, 2003. She's a something. celebrity. Yeah, I know, but she, it's not like, <laughs> I don't know. Who's like the, always Nicole Kidman, her best friend. They're best friends. Mm. Nicole Kidman's very famous. All right, fine. She's in the, yeah, all right, fine. If photos came out of Nicole Kidman uh -huh. drinking from like a cup with a dude dressed as the devil and it's like, this is just her having fun. Yeah. <laughs> like you're right. You're you're peeking in at a night at home with Jane Mansfield and Anton LaVey. Yeah, exactly. Like they were doing this already and then they took pictures. Right. It's um, so good. She's wearing like sweet go-go boots. Yeah, it's, it is pretty crazy mm -hmm. it also doesn't give the greatest impression of what the church of satan does not that i think that like everyone needs to be like give these people a break because i think that they're pretty annoying <laughs> yeah there's but like he's dressed in like a robe with devil horns it's ridiculous feeding her from a goblet like it's it's what you would make it's probably weird jokes honestly i was about to say what you would make jokes about it's weird jokes about goths and satan it's spring from yeah, oh yeah he's literally wearing a cape and holding it open with his arms uh-huh and he has and, like a goatee and looking dark yeah it's pretty wacky yeah and That's, fantastic uh, and he's like all in black in most of the pictures and then she's like bright white hair wearing all light it's great it's great yeah it is it's it's pretty great what a treat a real marilyn munster type vibe Ooh, right yeah marilyn yeah. munster was the one munster that mm -hmm. looked like a normal person yeah totally yeah yeah very cool right weird i mean there are other celebrities that were involved in the church of satan right like wasn't um rat pack didn't oh yes um pack? sammy davis jr yeah he was a satanist he wore like a, a necklace with an up upside down crucifix right all over the place like, yes Weird stuff. I didn't look. That came up um, a little bit today. And I think there's also speculation that that was just kind of like for show, for oh, a little publicity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't go far into it, but it could be that it was just him being like, let's mess with the cats or whatever. <laughs> Sashuating. <laughs> we both can't do Sammy Davis no, Jr. We, we both cannot. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that Sweet. takes us to the end of another episode of Guide to the Unknown. That'll wrap her up. The octopus and Jane Mansfield is still what and I want to Anton call And Anton LaVey. I know. I don't know what to call it, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> thank you all so much for tuning in. Yeah, thank you. We hope, hope you, you enjoyed, enjoyed this show. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope you never look at octopuses the same ever again. Yeah, or um, Jane Mansfield. Yeah. Or Mariska Hargitay. Yeah. You can see it. They look alike a little is, bit. And I hope you're strange. looking at Mariska Hargitay because Law & Order is great and she's awesome and she does a lot of really good work for End the Backlog. In the backlog? And the backlog. Like the backlog of like rape cases that are going unsolved. Oh, really? Like bringing those back out and taking care of them. Oh, cool. Yeah. Hey, we might know about like who the Zodiac killer is and stuff from like old DNA tests. <laughs> uh, I will lose my mind. Are you prepared for that? Chelsea and I have been talking about oh. that. Our mutual friend Chelsea. Yeah. Again, hug, get the huggies ready. <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking about pooping myself so much tonight. Everyone, send us <laughs> yeah. some uh, backup huggies. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, no, I will. I, no, I'm not prepared. I don't know what I would do. Yeah. That's the one where I would really. I mean, the Golden State Killer was very exciting to me. I was a really big fan of Michelle McNamara for like years, just from like her like like dinky blog, yeah, basically. Yeah. And I was so sad when she died. And I so I thought what I'm saying is I followed the case for a long time. So I really was like very excited about the whole Golden State Killer thing. But Zodiac, that's yeah. like me being obsessed with it since I was like 11. I know. Like, I know. Oh, I, man. 
I can't wait. I know. I cannot wait. I know. Anyway, anyway. Uh, thank you all once again for tuning in. Yes. Uh, yeah. Please consider going out there and spreading the word yeah. about we our would little love show. That. We'd love more people to listen to it. Yeah, so. we would greatly appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, you can go tell people out there, write posts online, mm-hmm. uh, write iTunes reviews. Yes, please. Yeah, whatever form your support takes, we appreciate it. Yeah, whatever it. form your creativity takes, just go with it. Yeah. That's fine. You can check us out on Patreon, mm-hmm. download the app, give us a little search in there, or yep. go to patreon.com slash GTTU pod yep. to donate monthly. You can follow at GTTU pod on mm-hmm. Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And we are available online separately as well. Yes. I'm at chillin Chris, <laughs> chillin Kristen on Instagram. I am at haunted sponge. Mm-hmm. So we will see you next time for another terrifying episode that shines a light into the dark corners. We mostly like to ignore of the sea, but until that time comes, we must travel. Back to the netherworld, the deep netherworld below, the oceans of the sea, go away. (laughs) Good night. I know where I was going with that, just like the beginning. The oceans of the sea. Oh boy. Yeah, you're right. And now (laughs) I return to the ocean until next time. I'll just sink back into the water until it's time to record again. <laughs> We're going to be really pruny when we come back. Prune. prune. Do you think there are any prune. like um, cryogenic stasis type things that exist? Under the sea? No, like just in general. Like, you know, freezing Walt Disney's head kind of stuff. Oh, uh... You know, I don't know. I don't. I really don't know anything about that. Like, it would be awesome if there was a, like somebody who did a show uh-huh. and between shows. They were like, "All right, well, I can't age." Oh, like Michael so Jackson with his like myself. with his chamber. What was his chamber? It was again. You know, I might be remembering this wrong. It, there was a picture of it in like National Inqu- National Enquirer. I think that it was proven that it wasn't true, but they said that Michael Jackson had a hyperbaric chamber that he was in like all the time to preserve himself, like Darth Vader. Yeah, That's yeah. Awesome. It was like a bed. Like they had a picture of it. And I think that it was I think it was debunked, but he was such a peculiar yeah. Pamela that it could Man, have been real. Even just referring to your bedroom as your chambers, that <laughs> needs to return. I'll be in my chambers. That's great. Yeah, you're right. That is great. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Chamber pot. Yeah. It was the pot in your chamber. Ugh. Isn't that weird? Yeah, that's a I just realized that. Yeah. That's definitely a convenience of modern living that I enjoy, not having to poop into a pot in my room yeah you keep that in your room i know that why can't that be in a different oh room? my god like why i don't like it when i the same room you were sleeping in yeah i don't like it when i haven't changed the litter box for like one day over i can't imagine being in a room with my own excrement had they not figured out the bathroom i guess not Where did they take a bath they probably oh my god like in cinderella like they they sponged off in like a big bowl was that in the bedroom too was that that was in like the living room or something? In Cinderella, it right? was in the, in the bedroom. Like in Cinderella, they the birds held up like a curtain so the audience didn't see her naked, and then the birds were like squeezing right. water on top of her, right. and it was in her room. Yeah, man, who was the genius that was like, "Hey, can we put a wall between these things?" <laughs> yeah, seriously. Whoever did that, I hope that they like retired wealthy and right and fat. <laughs> did they get that? <laughs> did they get that idea from the screens? You know what I mean to like divide dorm rooms? Maybe. And then well, they were like, "Hey, wait a second. Maybe they we, had like, a roommate and they had to." And they were like, hey, we need a different room for that chamber pot. Yeah. That's a whole different kind of situation altogether. We need a new chamber, a small chamber. What the evolution of the chamber pot was? Because when it stopped being your chamber, when it started being your bedroom, did you have a bedroom pot? (laughs) You know what I mean? No, it was only ever a chamber pot. Nobody was ever like a room pot. And it became bedpan. Bed that's pan. just the same thing, basically. Well, I think a chamber pot is more that you have to get up and use it. Bed pan is like, I think, for somebody who... Um, has to stay in bed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, I don't think that they're the same thing. I think a chamber pot was the primitive bathroom, and a bed pan is like a pan of necessity. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And then, where did you dump out your chamber pot? Like, I mean, I did you travel? I know. Yeah. Like you wouldn't like go into the woods like three miles and do- yeah, I guess you just did it out the window. <laughs> That's so horrible. Oh my God. It's so horrible. Probably some of it's on the house. I like this is this is really like not cool. Uh-huh. I can't imagine living any period of time before like 
Yeah, without I modern. I was going to really shorten it out. I was going to really be like, it would suck to live any time before now, but that's not really true. It would suck to live like a hundred years ago. Yeah, without that modern plumbing and electricity. That would be horrible. It would be horrendous. I mean, it's all relative, so they didn't know. They're just like, oh, okay. Yeah, you know well, I, I mean? guess but I'm like, really more saying like, if we were plucked out of now and we landed a hundred years ago. Horrible. Can you imagine? Horrible. The horrible. rest of the your life. The water is brown. Oh my God. Oh, I would die. And there'd have to be a like a bucket under my petticoats for when I had my period. Yo, if I only had ice cubes like for a quarter of the year, I would lose oh. my mind. Yeah. Yeah. That would be horrible. I I really rely on ice cubes, y'all. Really? I love them. I love cold stuff. Kara, my boss is like very <laughs> very into ice cubes. Yeah, I only she like to really drink, needs ice cubes. I only like to drink cold stuff. Oh. I drink iced coffee in the winter. Yeah. I don't like to drink hot stuff. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's like soup. Ew, no, it's not. But I don't like cold soup. <laughs> I like hot soup and cold drinks. <laughs> well, William, you're an interesting man. Yeah. All right, everybody. All right. Uh, thank you all so much for yep. tuning in. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, Nudge. Good night and good luck. Thank you, Nudge. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry it kept freezing. I don't know what was up with that. Hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. Sorry about that. Weird. I don't get it. Hopefully it doesn't look... Bad in the YouTube version. Um, <laughs> Naomi Watts, look, Naomi Watts is doing fine. Oct- October, I think she doesn't give a crap she about She does me. like independent movies and stuff. Like she's an artist, but she's, she's just artist. not the person that I was like expecting you to say. I don't like know. that's what it is. It wasn't a condemnation of I Naomi follow Watts. her on social media and I, I was looking at her Instagram earlier today. So I think that's why it came to mind. Do you know who like the cool young celebrities are now? Some of them. It's weird. Like I know like the cool celebrities for people my age and a little bit younger, but like the people who are the celebrities for people like in their teens and like early twenties, yeah. I know their names, but I don't care about them. Like Sean Mendez. I could give <laughs> it just a, sounds like a guy. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm trying to think who else. Yeah. Like I know them by name, but I just don't pay attention. Yeah. I'm excited for the future where like, <laughs> I just don't care about anything. And I'm like, Oh, there's a new Mitch Breakfield movie. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, young actor, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm totally joking. It, 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 Naomi Watts was a weird call. <laughs> Everyone's wondering what Mitch is up to. Yeah, is yeah so I'm not, not a celebrity name. Yeah, is there I'm, a famous Mitch? Famous, Mitch Hurwitz. Yeah, Mitch Hurwitz. Rest of development. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to think. I think that's it. Might be it. There's another, um, is there a Mitch who worked? Mitch Pelegi for yeah, the yeah, X-Files? Yeah, yeah, the X-Files. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, but yeah, not a whole lot of Mitches in the house. Hey, come up with another alien word. I thought of the same one again. I'm choking. Hang on. Blorknack. Love it. (laughs) All right, everybody. I think that's a wrap. Uh, Thank you all for hanging out. Uh, We'll see you later on. Have a good rest of your night. (laughs) Yeah. Try to come up with some alien names. Yeah, it's fun. Just spout them off. That's the thing, too, is like I always imagine like I used to talk about this with Bobby all the time. Like if you travel to the future (laughs) far enough. Yeah. Like I feel like you'd like the doors would open and people would just be like, Riffnap of our flash marf Yeah, right. Like, oh, there's not even there's language not even, like, has evolved to a point that it's unrecognizable to yes, us. Yes, there's not yeah. even a basic yeah. mechanic of it, or they're yeah. just like, yeah. and you're like, I, I don't know, uh, I don't know. Can you help me? <laughs> uh, that's what I yeah. want aliens to be. I want to see something that's like a color I've never seen before, and it just blows my mind the second I, I look think, at it. I, th- you know? I think that that's probably a thing. I don't know if we'll see it, but I, I think that that's a thing. Can I you really imagine do. Imagine seeing a color you've never seen before. <laughs> Like smelling something that you that has never existed. No, I <laughs> like that's what I like to think of aliens yeah, as being. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that they could like maybe lower themselves to our level in order to communicate with us in some way. Yeah, but I think there's a lot, there's a lot going on. Have you seen? Uh, sorry, uh, have you seen the the Carl Sagan thing about the three dimensional beings? I don't. I don't know. He has. He draws on a table, almost Mm -hmm. like if you were looking at a blueprint of a house. Okay. Like the layout of a house. So it's like the rooms, but they're all just you know squares and rectangles. Uh huh. And he he's like this has uh, a height. October says the fourth dimension. The fourth dimension. Yeah, I'm talking about the fourth dimension now. Yeah. It has height and width. Uh huh. That's it. That drawing. Like if you think of uh, uh, the original Super Mario Brothers, it's all just little squares. Yeah. Make up that person. Just height and width. We are three dimensional. Right. If you put your finger into Super Mario World, uh-huh. if you touched the page of Super Mario World, uh-huh. Super Mario would perceive you as a little oval. You know what I mean? Because it's just the tip of oh, your right. finger yep, yep. touching okay. that plane. Yep. He wouldn't even see the rest of your body because he can yeah. only see he can only see two dimensions. Yeah, right. So if you put five of your fingers on that page, he would see five ovals. Right. I'm one person. He would perceive 
five different beings. Right. So one of the theories about the fourth dimension, uh-huh. if it ever makes contact with our uh, three dimensions, yeah, because we've got height, uh, width, and depth, yeah. It might just be completely mind blowing. We yeah. wouldn't even comprehend what we're looking at. I bet that's true. Like we might see something that appears to be multiple things, but it's really one being. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. There and this is oh, stupid man. too. Indiana Jones four, which Brent bends my brain. Which everybody hates, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Uh-huh. Are you familiar with it very much? Yeah, I mean I've seen it. So one of the major concepts of that movie, spoiler alert mm-hmm. for this movie, everybody seems to hate. Yeah, that Shia uh, LaBeouf is named Mutt in. Oh my god, and he has the same hair as a chimpanzee or something. Capuchin, that's <laughs> yeah. what it is. They look at each other and they're like, oh, we have the same hair. And then they become friends. Actually happens in that movie. Um, there's this thing about the crystal skull. That's the major like thing about the plot. And what they discover is that there are like 13 crystal skulls. Yeah. And they go to this room where there are 13 crystal skeletons of yep. aliens sitting in like an oval. Yeah, so 13 chairs, 13 skeletons, 12 of them have skulls, and the yeah. 13th one is just a spinal column with nothing at the top. Yeah. They put the skull that they've been carrying around on that skeleton, uh-huh. and the room starts to spin. Uh-huh. And those 13 bodies, as they're spinning, like you think about like a centrifuge or something, yeah. the faster it spins, it all just starts to, starts to blur together. Yeah. The 13 bodies mash into each other uh-huh. until there is one singular being. Right. I remember that being cool. It was. I thought that looked cool yeah. until the alien then... You now see literally an alien, and it leans forward and glares at the bad guy, and that uh-huh. was a bit much. Uh-huh. But I feel like that's cool because that yeah. was one thing. Yeah, that was one alien, but in our dimension, it was perceived as thirteen different beings. Right, you know what I mean? But it was all just one thing. It's like so I feel crazy. like that's what aliens are, and like that is more what I'm talking about. Where it's like, who knows what the hell that thing is made out of? Maybe water is not a thing. Is water is three dimensional? Right. What's the fourth dimensional basis of life? Right? Yes, completely. Yeah. Yes. It blows my mind. Oh, it's so cool. And yeah, October. Yeah, like the concept of how ants can't even see us because we're just so massive. It's not nearly in their eye line or yeah. their realm of possibility. For sure. I was reading yeah. a thing um, just it, the other day about... Just just minor perception yeah. bends my brain. Like I was thinking this week when I was taking a walk for some reason with crumbs or something I saw and I let's let's say it was... Let's say it was a blade of grass or something. And I know grass is green, yeah. but there's a shadow on the grass, which made it look gray or something right. like that. And I was thinking about how when I was at Middlesex, I had to take an art class and I was drawing something and I was made, let's say, I don't know, let's say it was a plate. So I'm drawing the plate as an oval. And she was like, no, from the angle that you're at, you know, it's an oval, but you need to draw it as like a line. Because right. you can, you're just seeing it from the side, and I was like, Whoa. "Yeah, perspective. <laughs> yeah. Trying to mimic perspective in two yes. D. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, the the ant thing. Mm-hmm. October. I was reading a thing the other day about um, H. P. Lovecraft mm-hmm. um, and his his creatures, the old gods like yeah. Cthulhu and stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything about them. I've never read H. P. Lovecraft, but apparently one of the things that's the most horrific about them is that they basically generally perceive humans the way that we perceive bugs. Oh. So it's like, you know, if we have like we had carpenter bees in our garage. So Allie and I had an exterminator come and yeah. get rid of them. Yeah. And to us we're like finally that they're just gone. Right, right. They're just For nuisances. Those bees, right. That was like an extinction. Right. Level their life event. got destroyed. I know. I know. That um, was it. That was like the most momentous thing. And they don't have any comprehension of what happened. They heard a loud sound, suddenly some sort of like tidal wave came at them yep. and it was over. Yep. Like the old gods, like Cthulhu mm-hmm. might wake up yep. and just be annoyed and just like sweep his hand to just get rid of us. Right. And not even think about the fact that we have consciousness, that we care about things and we would look at him and not even understand what he is. Right. Like a bug doesn't necessarily look at us and see us being huge. A bug sees part of our shoe. Yeah. Yeah. And doesn't understand what the hell that is. Just that it is a threat. Right. That's it. Right. It's insane. Oh, it's crazy. I know. I like thinking about this stuff a lot, but it also gets me, it like messes with my brain in a way that's a little uncomfortable because like, I'm thinking in a way I don't yeah. usually think. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what did she say? I actually watched this thing. This is October saying yeah. this. I, I actually watched this thing saying the at, that atoms can actually manipulate themselves. So they say what we see is manipulated. Like we see it that way just because it really but it doesn't really look that way yeah like yeah. well that's even the idea of like the thing you observe 
changes because you're looking at it. Right. There are like things about like having two atoms. Yeah. Like, like uh, it's not splitting an atom, but it was like having two molecules from the same blah, blah, whatever the hell. Mm-hmm. And if you affect this one over here, the same thing happens to it over there, which isn't right. Right. And they've like seen like molecules teleport and mm-hmm. stuff. Like there's, it's there's crazy. But like, crazy and there are things stuff. that like that events that occur, but when we look at them, they don't happen. Yeah. Because looking at something changes, changes it. it. Oh, yeah, crazy. I know. I know. I know. I was having a thought. Oh, I'm never going to sleep tonight. I know. I know. I'm sorry. I've got I've got one last thing, maybe. Yeah. We'll see. No, I'm not even talking time wise. Now I'm going to be thinking about dimensions and perspective. No, I know. <laughs> there was, so there's a video game called uh, Horizon uh-huh. on PlayStation, and I was watching a thing about like, the game looks so amazing. How did they pull it off? Yeah. Because like, it seems like it's so much better than the hardware that they've got. And I watched this video showing how the video game actually works. Mm -hmm. And it's the character that you're playing as. Um, When she walks around, uh, like our vision is a cone, right? So like like my eyes are right here, but I can see a certain field of view. Mm -hmm. They only render, they only display what she's looking at. Uh So anything behind her doesn't exist. Oh. Until you turn her character. And then it pops into view. Like it's, they, they make it, pop onto the game map yeah. as you turn her character. So it, it literally doesn't exist until she looks at it. That's cool. It's cool. Like, Is that's it disorienting cool... to play? No, all? no. Like, it's, yeah. like, it's like totally, you would yeah. never even know yeah. had you not not like... Oh, it's literally just the construction of the game yes. is such... Oh, okay, okay, I gotcha. I yeah. thought it was like darkness until no. you like... Okay, that way gotcha. they like that way they like save on memory. That makes sense. Because they're not going to show the mountain yeah, that makes that's total behind sense. her. They're just going to yeah. show the river that she's looking at. Right. But if she turns to look at the mountain, they load the mountain and remove the river because right. she can't see it anymore. Right. And it made makes me sense. think like... Like, what if that's the way that we are? Like, perception is reality to yeah. some extent. Like, if if the whole, like, tree falling in the woods thing. Right. Like, if we don't see it, and, like, theories about the world as being, like, we live in a computer simulation. Yeah, like the Matrix. What if, you know, there must be places that a human isn't in right now. Right. Is it there? Like, does it exist at this particular Dick. moment? Yeah. And, like, you can argue that, like, obviously, yeah, because we can do the whole, like, you know, studying, like, the the changes in the, even, like, the wind and stuff, which, yeah. are, like, well, it has to be perpetually coming, but who's to say that that's not just, like, zeros and ones of code right. until someone right. is feeling it. Right. And then it's, like, rendered. Yeah. So that you can interact with it. Oh, boy. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. We're living in a simulation, guys. Yeah. And fifth wave series has aliens that look like octopuses. Yeah, that's like a really common theme, Christy. Yeah. yeah. These people were right on the money. All right, Crazy guys. Stuff. Well, right. yeah, we got. I'm going to go fold into myself yeah. while thinking about this. Yeah, we're going to turn off the stream and stop existing until you're looking at us. I'm going to become one dimension, basically. Yeah. Yeah. The second that we turn this off, we yeah. don't exist that's for right. you until you look at us again. Mm hmm. How weird is that? That's right. And even like stuff well, like this, in their hearts here's and something minds. that I've always considered doing. Yeah. If we're not able to record live, I've uh-huh. considered you and I recording and uh-huh. then just playing it in a live stream. No one would know. Oh yeah, you're right. Who has to know? Maybe we're not live right now. There are people who have done that. I've heard, I'm trying to think. I've heard of I've heard of things like that. Oh sure. Yeah. yeah. Like Kristen and I might not be sitting here right now. Like I might be on a beach right now. You don't know. My God, I might be eating the Whole Foods whoopie pie at home. Oh no, I already ate it. We bought these whoopie pies and I couldn't stop eating them. <laughs> There's one left and I ate it already. I forgot. Now that's fourth dimensionally thinking. There is one left and I ate it already. Ah! Right? Yeah. You and en- you're enjoying it right now, fourth dimensionally. Yeah. Somewhere in the time stream, Kristen is still eating a whoopie pie. <laughs> quarter by quarter, because I'm pretending that I'm not gonna eat the whole thing. Yeah. And in a parallel universe, there is a Kristen who has not eaten the whoopie pie yet and is going to go home and eat it right now. I don't know about that. That In every universe, I killed those whoopie pies pretty much as soon as they entered the home. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, everybody. All right, that's, dudes. That's officially a wrap. We're yeah. really actually going to stop now. Thank yeah. you all so much. Thank you. This was super fun. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for watching. Yes. Thank you for, for being our buds. Yeah. Thank you for being a friend. We'll see you again. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure Kristen knows the answer to this. Here, come, come I'll give it a shot. Hold on. Uh, also famous. Do you know who else was in the car? Mariska Hargitay. Oh, yeah. Who yeah. is her yeah. daughter? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hot news. Do you, do you also know that Mariska Hargitay yeah. is a um, the mantra of the love guru? <laughs> oh, my God. Did you know that?
That's a I did not. Yeah. He goes, that's no. Marishka Hargitay. I think that's funny. And then she shows up in that movie. She does? Yes. Fun fact. What era of her hair is it? <laughs> Fun fact. Yeah. I've never seen that movie. <laughs> I just know everything about it. I've never seen it. I know lots about the love guru. <laughs> if anyone so wants to ask, <laughs> hit, hit me up. I'll tell you yeah. everything you need to know. You're ready. Yeah. Um, 